Well, welcome everybody to the Resilient Leadership Podcast, where everything that we talk about is aimed at helping you to lead with a greater sense of calm, clarity, and conviction, even in anxious times. My name is Bridget Tyre, and as always, I am joined by my wonderful collaborator and co-host, Irvin Nugent. Irvin, how the heck are you? I'm doing well, although I have to say it's the dog days of summer, and <laughs> here in D.C., we've had a few heat indexes of over 100, so not that most people, but me especially, do not. I do not function well with very hot and humid. I think I still got my Irish blood, and so I, oh, yeah. I leave for fall to come and a relief to the heat. But, you know, yeah. we have the gift of air conditioning, and uh, thankfully, we have that, so... Yeah, the humidity around it's, it's August first, right? So yes. that we're recording. So yes, the humidity is in full bloom. Yeah, and uh, you know I like heat. I'm not from Ireland, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but even I who like heat, I mean the humidity can really start to get on my nerves too. So I appreciate yeah. that. Well, you know our topic for today is kind of apropos because since we can't change the weather. Mm. We must let it go. And uh, in fact, that's that's our topic today, right? The art of letting go. And it is an art. You know, it's a topic that I've been reflecting on mm. for a very, very long time because I struggle with it. Mm. I'm not somebody who easily and artfully and gracefully always knows how to let go. I'm a clinger. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to do this episode because I wanted to learn. I figured, well, if we do, you know, it's kind of like authors say, write about something you want to learn about. So do a podcast episode on something you want to get better at. That's that's my intent. So how about you, like, Irvin, what's your, what's been your experience with letting go? You know, so I love this because it, it, it forced me to reflect a little bit of, uh, as well. And I think there's a part of self-delusion within me because I think there's a part of me that thinks that I'm very good at forgiving. I'm very good at letting go. But I think when I face cold reality, the reality is that at times I hold on to things. And for me, it's holding on to personal slights, or at least in my eyes, personal mm -hmm. slights of other people, et cetera. And I find, you know, it comes up with an energy at times. I'm thinking, oh my God, I thought I dealt with this. I thought, it, and here it is. And it's reassuring that it's not just me, it's also you, but I think with clients as well, I think clients struggle and, you know, every now and again, in the midst of a coaching conversation, a client will say something and there's this like, aha, wow, that I've been holding on to this for a number of years. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was a conversation perhaps that didn't go the way they wanted it to, or, or even sometimes it's a throwaway comment ah. and we have read this huge story into it and, and it's just taken a life of its own and we can't let it go. Mm -hmm. So I think it's such an important practice and, and such an important discussion. And, you know, part of it, I think, as we always do, is grounded in the fact that we are human beings who are made for survival. And so we like to control our environment because yes. controlling our environment helps us. It's helped us to survive. And when we feel threatened, you know, the last thing we want to do is let go. So there is within mm -hmm. us, um, and I think it's it's important, I think, for us to realize that the survival instinct has served us, but at times as well, it, it gets in the way. Mm -hmm. And maybe the invitation is, you know, letting go. So maybe uh, an important question to ask, Bridget, as we start this conversation is, why is it important for leaders? Why is this an essential skill? that perhaps letting go creates better leadership? Yeah, it's it's a really good question because we're, we're claiming that it's an essential skill for leaders and, and just for life, to navigate life. And I think part of it is embedded what you just said there, which is that anxiety makes us do the opposite. Mm. Anxiety makes us grip the steering wheel tighter, right? Yeah. I think about driving home in the middle of a storm and my hands are clenched around the wheel and I'm, you know, and then I kind of look at my fist. And I'm like, well, this isn't helping me drive better. <laughs> yeah. So at the end of the day, it's about learning when and where and how to loosen our leadership grip, right? That's not easy because I work with a lot of business owners and entrepreneurs mm -hmm. and in the beginning of their businesses, they are in control. They are, mm -hmm. they are holding that steering wheel pretty darn tightly uh, and for good reason, right? Yeah. Yeah. But if you want to scale and grow your organization beyond you, 
Mm-hmm. You're going to have to let other people drive sometimes. <laughs> You're going to have to <laughs> loosen the steering wheel grip a bit. And that's tough. And I remember an example of a client company I worked with about 10 years ago, and it, there were three founders. And so, you know, as founders, this, this company was their baby. Mm-hmm. And I mean, that's how they treated it. And they had put so much sweat equity into it, mm-hmm. but they were trying to grow it and really mature it. But their impulse, their natural impulse to want to control everything kept the organization from growing and scaling properly. And they had a hard time letting go of their areas of responsibility, but they also, this was interesting. Mm -hmm. A CEO was brought in, a new CEO was brought in to oversee the three founders and talk about troubles with letting go. (laughs) They really couldn't let go enough to let the CEO do what the CEO was supposed to do, right? So scaling and growing our organizations, if you want to do that, then learning when and how to let go is going to be absolutely vital. Yeah. Uh, you can't get there yeah. without that. So that's the first thing that came to my mind, Irvin. Mm. But what do you think? Is Are there other reasons that letting go is essential to leadership or what comes to your mind? Yeah, I love that. I love that first idea as well. I think one other idea that comes to my mind is the fact that the ability to be open to the fact that there are other ways of doing things. <laughs> because so often, you know, when we when we get into a mentality, especially when we, we we want to control or drive or get things done, we live in a society where it's get things done. And at times we miss potential other ways of doing it. At times, potentially we miss other voices. And we know that better decisions are made when everyone's voice is heard. And so I think part of that letting go is that it doesn't have to be my way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That there may well be other ways of getting to be that I hadn't considered. Mm-hmm. And, you know, one thing just comes to mind is, my God, how many, how many times before COVID did people say, you know, wouldn't it be a wonderful idea if we could have some remote work? And the answer to was absolutely not. <laughs> This is not a possibility. It'll destroy the work culture. We'll never get things done. And all of a sudden, COVID kind of, well, we didn't let go. We kind of had to let go. It kind of gripped us. But all of a sudden, this is awareness. Oh, my God. We actually, things can get done. And productivity in certain sectors improves. So yeah. so there was you know, this ability to, to be open. So I think letting go helps us perhaps you know, look at other areas. And I think even personally, you know, I do a lot of work, as you know, around emotional intelligence. And when COVID came, I said, oh, there's just no way I could do virtual teaching with this. This has to be in person. And it was a block. It was a real block for a number of months before I gave it up. And then this ability to think, you know what? It's amazing. The virtual space actually allows for certain gifts that I thought thought weren't there at the beginning. So, yeah. so yeah. So I think this, this whole idea of exploration of other ways mm-hmm. can really be aided with, with the letting go. Yeah. Because what it does is opens up new possibilities, right? Mm-hmm. If you're so oh. busy, I'm thinking like what comes to mind as you were speaking is like a person on a flying trapeze, right? Yeah. And they're gripping that bar and they can't let go and the other bar is coming in and, yeah. but they can't grab the other bar oh, because, yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's mm. it's really about w- what are new possibilities that mm. await us if we can let go at least of one hand <laughs> and maybe yeah. not both, right? Yeah. And the other analogy that comes to mind is that it's like pruning a tree or a bush of dead branches. Mm. Or like I was on vacation recently and I had somebody water my plants, but when I came back, they looked really crappy. And I realized part of the reason is I hadn't been pruning them. I hadn't been clipping off those dead, you know, flowers and buds, and there wasn't any room behind that for new flowers to to grow. Mm. So yeah, it's it's essential because new possibilities are not really accessible to us uh, without also letting go of the old. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know, Irvin. Like, can you think of in your own personal life a time? In particular, when you really had to let go in order to grab hold of something new or when you struggled to, even though you're pretty good at it, I think. Well, you know, so I, I, one thing comes to mind, and it's not this the huge thing, but it was a habit that I had that I became aware of. And the habit was when someone would ask me a question like, um, do you know about such and such or have you heard about or have you read? 
instinctually within me, I would say yes, even though I hadn't. Ah. And as I explored that, it was this need, this need to be in control, this need to feel confident, this need to feel read, this, this need to be the expert. Mm. As I thought about that, what did I lose? And I love this idea of the trapeze because I think what I was losing was the opportunity for a wonderful conversation. Yeah. Slowly but surely, I began to catch myself in that habit. And it was okay to let go of needing to be the expert. And it was okay to show up as the learner. Mm. And that I didn't have to have the pressure of knowing everything in my role. And it did. It opened some great conversations as people were able to share. And it seems at the moment, as I look back, Daw is so simple, and yet it had such a powerful hold on me. Well, thank you for sharing that. What a great example. Because we all do things like that, right? Yeah. And the question is, it's not until we take a deeper look at what's behind that, mm -hmm. that we're able to let go. Because then we see, oh, there's something on the other side if I let go of this. Yeah. Yeah. So I think, you know, uh, in our work with clients, we have, we have all these recurring themes of things that we need to learn to let go of. So maybe it's a good transition now to ask that. And what are, what are some of the things, because I'm sure it's not everything, yeah. but what are some of the main things we need to let go of? What do you think, Bridget? Yeah, well, certainly it's not everything because I'm sure even mentioning letting go is anxiety producing for some <laughs> of our listeners, right? I mean, these are mm. folks that are successful. They make things happen. They push, they pull, they cajole, right? So, and that's sort of the opposite impulse of letting go. So no, it's not about letting go everywhere of everything. Mm -hmm. But I think the very first place to look, and this is a theme that comes up, you know, in coaching, at least for me, is might we need to let go of the need to control? The need to control people, projects, outcomes. Now, again, we naturally as human beings and as leaders, we want to be in control of our day and our schedule and our calendar. And we do want to exercise control over projects. And right. But there's a difference between exercising proper control and becoming controlling. That is a really important distinction because when we try to control people and relationships, it always backfires because mm. we just don't, right? We don't like being controlled. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and when we try to control outcomes and projects too tightly, we rob people of the opportunity to do their own best thinking. Yeah. You know, it's like um, there's no space for that. Mm. And so instead of people coming up with their own ways of doing things, it's like what you were saying earlier, you know, it's like, can we allow people to do things their way and not necessarily our way? So I think inside of every leader, every successful leader is a hidden little control freak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, and, and who wants to admit that, right? Yeah, but totally. I just think... There, yeah. There's a little bit of that. And so Absolutely. one place to, to let go is in this need to be controlling of people, mm. projects, and outcomes. What, what else, Urban? Where, where else or what else? Yeah, I think another area that's very evident both in my own life and then in people that I work with is letting go of, of some emotions and grievances that we've had. Mm -hmm. You know, we're emotional beings and emotions we can, we, we've talked in a previous episode about triggering emotions and we can trigger and re-trigger and re-trigger emotions. And so it's really important to be able to not, so I want to make a distinction here. This is a letting go and not a suppression. So very often, you know, when an, we, we talked about anger last week and, you know, yeah. sometimes anger, we have these stories about anger, the anger is bad, et cetera. And so, and so what we said there was, you know, no, there's a message. It's there, there's a gift in the emotion. Yes. And then it's like, okay, message received. And then there comes a point now it has served its purpose and now I need to let it go. Yeah. So, um, you know, and that one of the, one of the emotions I think is fear, you know, so often fear can rule our lives. We can be mm. fearful about something and we have a message about this. If we do something or we act in a certain way, this ability to be able to kind of let go of the fear and mm. maybe then look at it in a different way and summon up some courage can be important or even anger or resentment. Mm. You know, how, how often do we hold on to resentment? 
because of something that's happened. And it's our story and we're, we're, it's gripping us and it's, it's really impacting how we show up and impacting our relationships. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Those could be some of the hardest things to let go of. Right? Oh God. Yes, absolutely. And I think, you know, part of that is first of all, the recognition that it's there. And then in some way, trying to detach a little bit and just to bring, we've talked about this before, bring the curiosity. Mm-hmm. And just almost like to to detach the emotion from us and just to look at it. Wow, look at that. Look at that fear or look at that resentment. What's that about? Mm-hmm. And just to spend some time. And I think it's 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 part of spending the time and then detaching ourselves in the lead up to be being able to kind of let it go. Yeah. That is an art, isn't it? Because it is. I think sometimes we think we've let go, but really what we've done is suppress it or squelch yes. it. Oh, like yeah. whenever anybody says it is what it is, yes, <laughs> I always go, oh, okay, <laughs> maybe haven't received the message yet and let it go. Yeah. So oh, that's absolutely. a really, really important, another important place for us to investigate, right? Yeah, absolutely. So Bridget, have you any other thing that comes to mind or any other area that comes to mind when you think about this sense of letting go? I do. You know, I think one of the most important and most difficult things for leaders to let go of is the need to be liked, Mm. the need to be beloved and popular and just, you know, always just so well thought of. I mean, it's a basic human need who doesn't want to be liked. But in terms of leading from a place of strength, And leading with resilience, that's something we have to work on. We can't grip that too tightly because it interferes with our ability to do and say and decide unpopular things. Mm -hmm. We've talked a lot about leading with conviction in this podcast. And so letting go of the need to be liked allows us the space to lead with greater conviction I don't know. Any thoughts come to your mind, Irvin, about how one does that, though? It's easier said than done, right? Yeah, but boy, do I feel guilty on that one. I, I mean, I, that is something I've always struggled with in leadership is this, the wanting to be liked. I think part of it is, uh, for me, what's helped is this ability, I think, to realize a connection to the, normally what happens is we're normally dealing with one person. And we make decisions because we want to be liked by that one person. Oh, and yeah. what I try and do that is then, how's this impacting the greater whole? And mm-hmm. to realize that I am leading the whole organization and not just one person. Yeah. And I think that mm-hmm. that has helped me as well to ans- ask some great questions. But it's, uh, yeah, it is very difficult. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And maybe just right behind that is letting go of, or maybe even in front of it, is letting go of an identity. Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's that's a big one because mm-hmm. our identities are like our skins. Yep. And we don't shed our skin very easily. And thinking of identities that we have that maybe are sometimes we're conscious of it, but sometimes it's just beneath conscious awareness, meaning the way we define ourselves, the way we see ourselves, that's our identity. And we want to protect it. So let's say, for example, um, you kind of reminded me of this when you were speaking earlier. Let's say we have an identity as a subject matter expert, somebody who's the go-to, who knows all the answers about X, Y, and Z. And then we start to get promoted into you know, supervisory management leadership positions. And we have a hard time letting go. Because the identity and the rewards and the Mm -hmm. success and the track record come from being a subject matter expert. Yep. And now we're leading other SMEs, you know? Yep. And we don't have all the answers. Yep. And that can be very, very challenging. So I'm curious, Irvin, if, I don't know, have you ever coached somebody who had to let go of one identity and embrace another in order to move forward? Is that? Ring yeah, track. I mean, one person comes to mind. It was a really interesting case, and uh, it was in an organization where it was a nonprofit where there had been a founder in place for twenty years, and then this person who I was coaching was their COO, the number two, and had been mm. there for ten years. Wow. And in that role, the the founder was a very charismatic, powerful person, a little controlling, and really 
the the role of the CEO had been kind of almost like servant and a um, helper kind of thing because the energy was just so big and they'd never really defined anything apart from that. And so when the founder left and kind of retired and they became the CEO, they, they, they took over. Mm-hmm. It was a very difficult transition because this identity that they'd had that. And so in other words, it was like, well, I just feel I have to continue being the helping person yes. because this is people, you know, people have always come to me when they felt they couldn't come to the CEO because they were such a powerful person. And so this has served me well and it's got me here. And then we, we had to really talk about, well, well, is this what's needed now? Mm. Yeah, And, you know, I'm part of the, a lot of these questions, well, how do I take over from a legend and et cetera? Yes. I can't be that person, et cetera. <laughs> and I said, well, no one's asking you to be that person, but, yeah. but, and, and so it was a process of really them defining the role they wanted mm-hmm. and, and what was good, what did they want to take from the role that they had and what needed to change in this particular moment? What was you know, and there was a lot of, of doubt and fears, et cetera, a little bit about needing to be liked came up as well. Yeah. Yeah. But I, it took him about four or five months to really begin to define that kind of what leadership looked like for them. Yeah. You know, what's interesting. I'm listening to you and I do not know why this popped into my head, but it, it did, which is um, perhaps a, a little bit of a struggle that I had letting go of an identity. So as I was sharing with you earlier, before we started recording, I'm about to become a grandmother for the third time. Mm. So I'm going to have three grandchildren. And it is truly, like they say, it's the best thing ever. Best thing ever. But when I found out that my daughter four and a half years ago is going to have a child, so this is my first grandchild, right? Mm. And of course, I'm thrilled. Mm. And yet, come to think of it, it's an identity shift. Because, you know, I, I've always defined myself as a young and vibrant and, you know, exuberant, full of life kind of person. You know, I'm not a grandma, yeah. <laughs> you know, and just kind of beginning to let, not let go of being vibrant. I can still be vibrant, right? But to, to really embrace this new role as mm. a grandmother. I took a little identity shifting, a little letting go and a little grabbing on. And it's not easy. Yeah. I mean, we're talking about some pretty deep stuff. But if we're going to continue to grow as leaders, if we're going to mature, if we're going to take on new roles and new responsibilities, I bet several times in our career, letting go of one identity and defining and embracing another is going to be part and parcel of that. Yeah. Right? All right, so let's get down to brass tacks here. Mm-hmm. So we're talking about letting go. Oh, yeah, it sounds good. Yes, we see why it's important, you know. But like, how do we do it? Or what has to actually be in place for leaders to like really loosen their leadership grip? Yeah. You know, for me, I think the first thing that comes to mind is that we have to have confidence in the people around us. So mm-hmm. part of that is you know, taking a look at the team that we've assembled. Mm -hmm. Um, Because I think if we don't have confidence, then it's going to really impact our ability to let go. And, you know, sometimes we just, uh, we have to attempt to put the right people in the right places. Um, That's a lot more difficult than it sounds. And, And especially, you know, in the past couple of years with hiring issues as well, it's been difficult to hire the right people. And, and I think we have to acknowledge that, but I think, Overall, I think a leader needs to think about, can I trust and have confidence in the people around me? Mm -hmm. And can I give more to them? Can I let go? What do I need to let go of so that I'm really to do things, I'm ready to do things that I otherwise could not. I think that's the key there. Yes. It's not just so much letting the control, it's also opening up just like that trapeze yes. into what now might I be able to do mm-hmm. that I have given some other things are delegated to the team. Oh yeah. That's so important. And yes, you're right that there are still some gaps in terms of having the right people on the team residual from COVID and so forth. But what I would invite our listeners to consider is, is it really so Mm -hmm. that you can't trust Mm -hmm. or entrust the people that you currently have? Right. Because I think we can get into a pattern, a habit, Yep. Of not of not trusting. Yep. 
Yeah. And, and, you know, let's, you, let's talk about delegating. That's really what you were speaking to there is mm. where could we delegate more mm. so that we can then grab hold of the things that only we can do yeah. in our role. That, that's really key. And then the other thing I'm thinking about is, you know, pushing decision making down to the people closest to the process. That that's another way we can let go. And, and I am thinking about a client that I coached in his transition from COO to CEO. And this was one of his mantras. So he led a large organization and it was burdensome and bureaucratic because people at headquarters wanted to make all the decisions for all the people in the field, you know? And he's like, no, 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 no. We kind of let go of that. You, we need to push decision making down to the people who are closest to the process, who understand and see and know best, you know, what is needed. Yeah. And again, that gets back to some level of trust, doesn't it? Yep. Oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Again, not easy. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we're talking about letting go of the need to be liked. That's tough. Letting go of identities, letting go of the desire to control. I mean, it's multifaceted, isn't it, Irvin? Yeah. You know, so there's been very rich conversation here about, about all the different facets of that letting go of, you know, we, we've talked about how challenging it is basically because as human beings, you know, we are anxious at times and anxiety gets in the way of letting go because this helps us survive. And yet, we know that part of leadership success is this ability to let go. And um, when we just recapped and some of the ideas of what we might need to let go of. Now, we always end our episodes with a practice. So Bridget, is there a core pr- practice you might want to suggest here that might help our listeners get even better at the art of letting go? Yeah. So this is, um, this is actually a somatic practice. Mm. So it's not, it doesn't just live in our head. This is to get the idea of letting go into our bodies. This is one thing to talk about it. And it's another thing to do it. Right. And I, and I call this practice loosening our leadership grip. So I'm Mm -hmm. just going to walk, walk our listeners through it. Okay. And I know people listen to, you know, podcasts while they're running or walking or on the treadmill or whatever, be that as it may, here's how this practice goes. And it's really about getting in touch with the energy and effort we expend When we are holding on to something so very tightly, when we are gripping it with all of our might. So here's how it works. So if you can get a pencil or a pen or any object that you have on hand and put it, open up your hand, flat palm, and put that pen or object right there in the middle of your open palm. And now I want you to close your fist around it and and grip it with all your might. So you are really clinging and clenching tightly to that pen or pencil in your hand. And you're noticing as you do that the longer you have to hold that grip, the more energy you expend in doing it. You really bring your attention to that fist that you're making. And what do you notice about what it takes to continue to grip something. And now use your imagination to look at what you're gripping right now, that pencil or pen, as that grievance you have yet to let go of, that emotion that is lingering, that project that you are controlling, that person who you are trying to will them to change. And now, Just relax the grip. Let it go. Open up your hand and uh, allow that pen to just rest in the palm of your hand. And notice that you can even move your hand around and that pen's not going anywhere. You're still Mm -hmm. holding it. You're still influencing it. It's still in your sights. But the energy needed to just hold it with ease in the open palm of your hand is dramatically different. Mm -hmm. And what what might it make possible for us Mm -hmm. if we could do this same thing with the places where we are gripping with all of our might? 
So that's our practice. And Irvin, I'm just curious if uh, while you were listening to me, maybe you were doing it yourself. I don't know, but what? I, I was. I'm gripping my, my red pen here. <laughs> and uh, it's such a powerful visceral exercise. I love it. I could just feel the blood rushing to my fingers when I let go. Mm-hmm. And kind of, it just brought to mind, you know, kind of the, the energy that's expended. Because at times we don't think of that energy. And then the release and... And I think the the wonderful power of that ability to release. Mm. Mm-hmm. Very powerful. Well, thank you for that practice, Bridget. Thank you for today's episode. Um, this has got me thinking. I am walking away today and um, I'm going to think about some areas in my life that perhaps I need to put more thought into letting go and what energy am I expending on them. So we hope you've enjoyed today's episode. Uh, Remember, please subscribe. Remember, if there's someone who you think the content of this episode would really resonate with, please share it with them. We're also very opening to your own ideas, thoughts, suggestions. Um, We have a specific email for the podcast, which is uh, resilientleadershippodcast at gmail.com. Please feel free to email us. And our next episode, we're going to talk about the intersection of uh, spirituality and leadership. I'll be looking forward to that conversation as well. So Bridget, thank you so much. Great Mm -hmm. speaking with you today. Thank you, Irvin. Yeah. And to all our listeners as well, have a wonderful week ahead and we look forward to um, being with you in their next episode. Have a great day, folks.